My name is uh, Alexander Bombo. I'm from Uganda and currently I am uh, based at the National Livestock Resources Research Institute which is one of 16 uh, national research institutes under the National Agriculture Research Organization. Um, what I basically do there is uh, forage breeding. I'm in charge of forage and forage crop breeding and improvement. So um, my journey to Uganda actually started in Uganda. So way back 2009, if I rewind a bit, uh, I was a grad student. And uh, you know, in grad school, there's always this uh, highs and lows. So I was at this particular low of mine, you're looking for variation. My, my PhD was on plant breeding. And specifically, I was looking for beta carotene. Um, my challenge then was to find variation for beta carotene, the source for beta carotene in sorghum, which I couldn't find. I tried to get in touch with Ilri Ethiopia because of the gene bank here, but they couldn't provide Ethiopia Agricultural Research Institute, also didn't have. So in that frustration, I had some maize plants, some of which were showing uh, the characteristic for beta carotene, the orange color, similar to what you have with orange flat sweet potato. So in that moment, you're in the greenhouse, not knowing where else to turn. And uh, I have a male sterile sorghum plant. You know, in, in, in sorghum, you can have a plant which is female, doesn't produce pollen and that which produces pollen is what we call the male. So I had the female which didn't have pollen. And I used the pollen from the maize to dust it on without ever knowing what would happen. Uh, of course, I just walked away. You know, like one week later, I'm doing my rounds in the greenhouse and I noticed when I removed the cover, the plant actually is developing seeds and I'm like, what's going on here? So, uh, I called my friend, my classmate then, he was from Zimbabwe, now Dr. Maposa Mtebisi uh, at the University of Lupane State in Zimbabwe. So we all looked at this plant, started reading, and all the literature said it's not possible, and no one had ever done that. Uh, of course, we got in touch with our PhD advisor, and I think he also didn't believe it. So. As students, we thought, well, let's take it upon ourselves and see how we can pursue that. So fast forward 2010, uh, I made an application for a scientific paper writing workshop, which was actually being uh, carried out by Baker Ilri at the time. And uh, I shared this with uh, Rob Skilton, who was head of capacity building at the time. And he also doubted, but then provided me with literature. And I told him we read all that stuff. So he says, okay, what proof do you have? And we shared with him proof of the picture. So the picture show you the phenotype of what it looks like. Phenotype means the outward appearance of the plant. And he's also surprised and he says, okay, how about you make an application to the Africa Bioscience Challenge Fund and see if you can characterize that. And that was when I moved to Nairobi to actually do that work. Uh, funding, of course, was from BMGF, Swedish, uh, Australia Aid, and other partners. And because of that work, uh, the director then, Dr. Seginet Kelemu, got in touch with the Gates Foundation, and they funded that research work. So after my PhD, I moved on as a postdoc at Baker Ilri to lead that kind of work. So with that work, I was able to do a number of things. Um, using any type of genomic tools uh, took me to the US at the University of Missouri and Tel Aviv University where I worked with uh, Dr. Asaf Testerfield. In Missouri I was with James Bachelor. So those added other tools that I couldn't do at Baker which were cytology and uh, cytometry. But my life in Israel and in the US was very interesting in that the people I met there changed the way I looked at things. So yes, everybody around me is excited you're doing this kind of serious work, but 
both of them challenged me differently. The question was, yes, you've done very good science, but what's the point? And the usual thing, like any student or any scientist, say, well, I'm going to publish. I want it to be known. And the answer was, I don't care, or they didn't care anyway. And you're like, why wouldn't someone actually care? So then the thing came down to me, they broke it down to me like, uh, it's not so much about people don't actually eat your papers. And I think that's the point we miss as scientists. We're so proud, we don't communicate with the end user, the people that will actually make sense out of the innovations we create out of science. So, yes, it looked like a different dimension of thinking. So, the answer was, I should be able to put money in their pockets, meaning the pockets of the farmers, mm. and in my own pocket. You don't just do science for the sake of science. It has to have impact. And I think that was a game changer for, for me. I've never thought of science the same way. Uh, fast forward, of course, I come back to Nairobi, and of course, discussions with my director then, Dr. Pauline Ajikeng, he advised it's better for the innovation to be known to have been done in Uganda rather than in Kenya. And so then I had to move, uh, of course, with uh, the invitation of the Director General of NARO then, uh, Dr. Ambrose Agona and uh, Dr. Yona Baguma. So they asked me to join NARO as a platform to anchor this kind of work. And since joining then, of course, I've been able to have the opportunity to have two extra grants, uh, one by Bio Innovate Africa program and the other by the Food and Agriculture Organization, both of which are directly funding this work. So Bio Innovate is actually looking at value addition to the agro produce that is coming out of this. FAO is looking at making this available to farmers. So there's complementarity there. And so I actually see the sense that I was actually told it should make sense to the end user, not just science. And I think that has changed the way I think about science today. I just don't feel that it should just be for the sake of it and I should be able to communicate to people. So in addition, that has also enabled me move a step further. So I think through by Innovate, I'm able now to be an entrepreneur. So most the way science works in institutions is that you do the science, publish, and that's it. And I want to move the extra mile. And that means providing a vehicle to move the innovation the extra mile. So I registered a company called Bonvite Agro Industries Limited. Now that is going to be for me what I want to do moving on. So within that, I'll of course have the science in it, the research, I'll have value addition because of buy innovate uh, capacity for farmers because they need to be able to produce this in a much more productive way and conserve it. And of course, trading, you have to sell seed, you have to sell grain. So those are the core things I'm thinking of doing under that company. And of course, partnering with uh, the National Agricultural Research Systems and still ILRI because that's where I was mentored. So that has been my journey from Uganda back to Uganda and possibly elsewhere in the world.